There is a lot to like about the recently released Vivo Nex S, so much so that Vivo have single-handedly forced market leaders to rethink their flagship designs before their next big thing hits shelves. They have managed to create a smartphone with an almost all-screen front and they have done so in a revolutionary way. Vivo is truly pioneering their way into the future. Let me tell you how in my full review. Before we unleash Vivo's new beast, let's take a moment to appreciate the solid and elegant build of its chassis housing its impressive hardware. At the front it is all glass with no distractions. Going to the right side of the phone you will see a power button and volume rocker. At the back of the phone you will find a nice clean sheet of glass with a cutout for its dual lens camera setup, next logo and light reflective rainbow design which looks fantastic on its black base. Moving to the left of the phone we find its smart assistant button with a nice textured feel to it. And at the bottom of the phone we find a single firing speaker, a USB type C port and a dual SIM tray. And at the top of the phone, we find a 3.5mm jack and a cutout for something special, which we will get to in a moment. Taking a look at the specs of the Vivo Nex S is impressive to say the least. It comes packed with a huge 6.59 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED display with an incredible 91.24% screen to body ratio. It has the latest Snapdragon 845 chipset as found in many 2018 flagships. Its base model comes with a hefty 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage at a reasonable $680. The top tier version comes with double the storage and will set you back around $760. All of this is powered with a gigantic 4000mAh lithium ion battery which will serve you well over a day of use. Vivo has also managed to cater for different consumers with its lower end Vivo Nex A which includes a less capable Snapdragon 710, 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage which will cost you around $610. Comparing the top dog model to the competition in China is around $200 cheaper than the P20 Pro which only has 6 gigs of RAM but is over $100 more than the best from OnePlus and Xiaomi. Comparing the Vivo Nex to the market leaders Samsung and Apple you will save around $300 to $400 and will be happy that your phone packs in more RAM. The main reason for Vivo's release is to win the race to an almost bezel-less design, which they have most certainly won, for now. Looking at the Galaxy S7 Edge on your far right, you will notice quite a big top and bottom bezel of Samsung's 2016 flagship. However, these are not as hefty as Apple's iPhone or the Google Pixel. Bezels have certainly come a long way in two years. On the left we have the brilliant Xiaomi Mi Mix 2S, which has the same winning design of their Mi Mix and Mi Mix 2 before it, which aims at a bezel-less design but keeps quite a thick chin at the bottom of the display in order to house the selfie cam. The middle left phone is the Vivo X21, which is their mid-range flagship that released a couple of months ago, and adopts the iPhone X notch very similarly to the OnePlus 6. Though the bottom chin is still present, it is a lot thinner than that of Xiaomi's Mix. The middle right, the Vivo Nex, has the same small chin as the X21, but does away with the notch in an exciting way. The only way to completely rid any phone of a chin is to bend the OLED display back into the phone, much like Apple did with its iPhone X. However, this would have added around $300 to the price tag, so they decided to stick it out with a minimal chin, which to be honest, is not very noticeable in person. When you look at the phone itself, the first thing you will notice is that it is all screen and it looks absolutely fantastic. Even after a week of using the phone, I can't help but smile each time I put it out of my pocket. Having all screen in the front does mean that Vivo had to make some changes. The first is to ditch a physical earpiece and use the phone's screen and vibration feedback to output audio towards your ear. After making a few calls with this Vivo Nex, I can easily say it sounds the same if not clearer than a regular earpiece and you can place your ear anywhere you'd like. The second change is removing the fingerprint sensor from the bottom bezel or back and place it under the lower part of the screen. And though it is not as quick as a physical sensor, it is surprisingly quick if you are accurate with the placement of your finger.
If you decide to place the phone down on a flat surface, the beautiful always-on display appears on its vibrant AMOLED panel. However, the fingerprint sensor is disabled until you move the phone again in order to preserve battery life, which may bother some, but it doesn't seem to faze me. And the last change up is the placement of the selfie cam. Though Xiaomi placed the front camera in the lower right corner of the phone, Vivo decided to reduce the size of the chin and opt for a futuristic pop-up mechanism housing the camera and I must say, I love it. It is strong and sturdy and feels very solid. Vivo have stated it can be used 50,000 times and can withstand 500 grams of force. Also, after a while, you barely notice it pop up. It makes three nifty sounds too, and when muted, it is very faint. I can barely hear it unless my ear is right next to it. The front-facing camera is an 8 megapixel shooter, which is not the highest megapixel count, but rarely matters until you throw it on a huge TV. It has an aperture of f2.0, which is not the widest front cam lens, but far from the smallest. The pop-up motion definitely makes for some true smiles. It is seriously fast and takes some clear snaps. As for the back camera setup, we have a dual lens system in a vertical layout much like the iPhone X. Its main lens has a 12 megapixel shooter with an impressive aperture of f1.8, which is capable of some great low light shots. Its secondary camera is only 5 megapixels with an aperture of f2.4, but is mainly used for the depth effect in portrait pics. It has great 4 axis optical image stabilization, phase detection autofocus, and a standard dual tone LED flash. Though there is a camera bump, it is very minimal especially compared to phones such as the Mi Mix 2S, iPhone X and OnePlus 6. It's got a real solid and slick feeling to it. The camera user interface is very simple and easy to use. It is very smooth and makes changing things up on the fly very seamless. Using the Vivo Nexus camera is a joy in itself. And when it comes to shutter speed, it is just as fast as any other flagship around though it is not record breaking by any means necessary. Looking back at shots on the Nexus vivid and bright AMOLED panel look breathtaking and though viewing the same photos on an external monitor doesn't look quite as crisp, they are pretty much as crisp as you would get on any flagship smartphone. The pictures in daylight look refreshing and beautiful though I feel the sharpness could be turned down a notch. In a low light setting, the dual lens cameras hold their own quite well. The pictures tend to come out brighter than I can actually see with my own sight. The only other phone I feel can match up to this level is the S9 Plus, which is why low light pics is one of its main selling points. There is no optical zoom as seen in the S9 Plus and P20 Pro, but the digital zoom does a better than expected job, especially when zooming into the sky when a chopper decides to make its way into your photo. Thanks to the powerful optical image stabilization, it managed to snap quite a great pic. The autofocus is extremely quick and compared to other high-end devices, it manages to surpass the best of the best. Things get interesting when you tap on that portrait key at the top of the camera UI and start to make use of the secondary camera's depth effect. Pictures come out looking natural and not at all edited software wise, especially if you throw some city into the background. Moving on to video is a little less exciting. You get the standard 1080p recording at 60 frames per second, but unlike the S9 Plus and OnePlus 6, the 4K is much like the 30 frames per second found on the Huawei P20 Pro. The 1080p slow motion at 240fps is a sweet little added bonus. The UI when in video mode displays some minimal but useful information. It is very basic and though there are few options, each does its job as expected.
At 1080p, it is slightly unstable due to the high frame rate, but it looks great. Recording things at 4K looks crisp, clear and smooth. This makes the lack of frames a little less of a deal breaker for me. When in slow motion, naturally things are slightly less clear, but the motion is on point and fluid. This is no 960 frames per second Sony cam, but it sure is easier to shoot with. Talking about the camera, Vivo also has its very own AI assistant, and her name is Jovi. She is not quite Siri, but she can run circles around Bixby when it comes to usefulness. Other than taking AI pictures, Jovi is able to collect data in the camera's vision and show you information such as what it is and where you can buy it online. In this case, I use my comfy sketches, and Jovi has decided to bring up Taba, China's eBay. Jovi can do many other things, but unfortunately the most important one, Voice Assist, is currently only available for mainland China users. My second favorite feature would have to be the dedicated Jovi button, which you find on the left of the device. This allows Jovi to capture everything on the screen and provide suggestions such as selecting text you usually cannot select, or even translate text which may be less useful for most, but as an English speaker in China it makes the world of difference. The dedicated button works great for what it is made for, though it would have been nice to be able to customize it to any app of your preference. However, the volume down key does that just fine. Jovi also has a feature called Smart Sense, which you find to the left of your home screen. It feels a little too similar to iOS than I would like, but houses some useful information such as upcoming events and cab rides. Talking about software, it has some useful features. It can show you how much data you have been using when you slide the notification bar down. Pulling up from the lower left of the screen brings up the control center, and though this feels a little like an iOS copy, it actually one-ups it and makes things a lot easier to navigate through on this huge display. I actually feel like all phones should have this feature. This phone also has built-in screen recording, which is a nice little extra. As you may have noticed, I have been using the navigation gestures to get around the phone. Sliding up from the lower right of the screen goes back. From the lower center goes home. Lifting up and holding from the lower center shows recently opened apps. However, opening the control center, lower left, neatly shows your running apps at the top, which you can easily close and switch between, which I find to be a lot more convenient. And just a little number crunching benchmark result for you. My Intuitu score put the rest of the world to shame. Now, some honorable mentions. The phone comes with a seriously great cover. Many phones include a cover, but none at this quality. It has a cutout at the bottom, it has a rubbery feel like the original Samsung covers at the back. You still see the next logo which is great and a very clean camera cutout which is elevated to protect the lenses. There is also a cutout at the top symmetrical to the one found at the bottom so that there is nothing in the way of that pop out selfie cam. Another worthwhile mention is that the Vivo Nex also comes packed with a huge charging block similar to an iPad with amazing fast charging speeds just over an hour and a USB type C cord which is a first for Vivo. It would be sad not to mention that Vivo have also thrown in their own V1 Hi-Fi DAC chip into the mix making things sound seriously impressive when using the available 3.5mm jack found at the top of the device. Though Bluetooth 5.0 makes wireless listening sound just as immersive with a good pair of wireless cans. If you are anything like my wife and have some small hands, you may struggle using the phone one handed, but if you have an average hand size like myself, you shouldn't find any issues handling the phone, especially with its curved glass back. Though there is no IP water resistance certification, 
it is splash proof and the lack of wireless charging may be a deal breaker for some but cable charging is still faster by a long shot. There is no option for an SD card but with 128 or 256 gigs of storage you will unlikely need one anyway. However, no NFC is a bit of a bummer. The Vivo Nex S has so much more going on for it than not. From its lavish 6.59 inch AMOLED all screen design to its crisp and clear futuristic earpiece, its groundbreaking pop-up selfie cam and its in-screen fingerprint sensor that actually holds its own quite well. Vivo have rapidly knocked the competition to the ground and kicked them repeatedly well down. And that is why I am more than happy to give it a score of 90. So, what is your next phone?